Hi, I'm Dave Tate from Elite FTS, and about a week ago I sent out a um, Facebook message asking for questions that you all may have that you would like me to answer in a video type blog. So I'm going to take this time now to answer a few of those questions. And if this goes over pretty well, we'll make it a regular feature on the site and kind of go from there. So if you have any questions after this is over that you'd like to see me answer in future video blogs, please address them and answer them in the comment section of the article below or in the YouTube video comment section. The first question I have is, who helped with the initial business plan and what obstacles with the business did I not expect? Um, helping with the original business plan, we're going back a long time. So we're going back to 96, 97, before the business actually hit online. And I had a advisory committee board of clients who I was training at the time who were professionals in the fields that they were working in from you know, doctors, lawyers, lobbyists, entrepreneurs, attorneys. You know, So I had a lot of different perspectives. None of them were actually in the fitness or strength and conditioning field, which helped from the business aspect tremendously because they were able to look at the different options I was considering from, from afar and to be able to offer perspectives that I otherwise would not have been able to get had I been in the same network of people who all kind of thought the same way. <clears throat> as far as what, what obstacles did I not expect, um, <laughs> what, what obstacles do you ever expect? You know, that's, I would say 99% of all the obstacles that I've been hit with I really didn't expect to a certain degree you know you do expect certain things and when you are in business there is what I consider chaos you know you need to learn how to basically dance in the rain because there's always some type of storm going on in, in one aspect or another if it's either in um, human relations marketing um, your competition vendors I mean there, there's there's absolutely always something going on so <clears throat> I didn't expect the the amount of obstacles or adversities to increase over time I think the general consensus and the general thought with most entrepreneurs is you know when we reach this this level I won't have to deal with all this BS where the reality is when you do reach that level you're dealing with bigger issues that make the issues that you dealt with in the past seem very small and insignificant. So after all these years now, the perspective that I try to keep when dealing with adversity or any type of business obstacles is, you know, 10 years from now, these are going to be obstacles that I'm going to look at as I do look at the obstacles I faced 10 years ago and think that they are actually small and insignificant. So you still have to deal with them in a significant manner, in a significant way. You can't just blow off everything. Some things have to be dealt with, other things, you know, don't. But generally, from the perspective that I've seen and the experience that I've come from, most issues people will tend to make bigger than what they really are, and most successes people will tend to make bigger than what they really are. So you have to be very careful and consider and look at the reality of the entire situation if you're going to make the most effective decision for the company as a whole. The next question is, when is the right time to use the conjugate method? I'm going to flip this question around a little bit and say, when is the wrong time to use the conjugate method? And the first answer to that would be, if you don't know what it is, you probably shouldn't use it. If you don't understand the basics behind what goes into a conjugated or a conjugate training type system, then you probably shouldn't use it. Um, <clears throat> going into the structure of it in a, in a video blog is going to take far more time than you know the three or four minutes I'm trying to keep this down to. 
there we are reposting the force training seminar that I did many years ago which is pretty much eight hours explaining the whole concept and philosophy and application of that method so when not to use it is when you don't know it that's that's very that's very simple other than that you know I don't think there is an optimal time or, or non optimal time to use it or not to use it because it is a method of periodization and is a method of programming I don't think any method of programming is either beginner, intermediate, or advanced. I think you can take any method of programming and have it structured in a way that it can be beginner, intermediate, or advanced. There is no such thing as an advanced program, a beginner program, or an immediate program. You can take a beginner program with the right tweaks and the right modifications to it, and it can become one of the best advanced programs that you can have for whoever you're working with. So. The best system is obviously going to be the system that's working the best for the individual. So I'm going to fall back on this question and say that education is the most important aspect. And the more you, the more you learn about the system and you learn how to, to modify the system, that's when you'll be ready to use it. And that's the same with any other system that's out there. It's very hard to take any system or any program at its face value and be able to use it to its most effective manner without some type of modifications having to be made at some point down the road. You need to know how the system is structured, what, what methods are behind that system to be able to effectively modify those components when you run into the roadblocks, sticking points, mini maxes, or whatever comes your way with that program. The next question deals with the box squat. Um, the way I read the question is, is the box squat only good for powerlifting? No, not at all. I think the box squat is one of the most effective ways to actually teach the squat, and I think it's one of the most effective ways to, to train and build and develop the squat. From a teaching perspective, one of the hardest things to be able to teach somebody to do is to be able to sit back into a squat position. A lot of times there's mobility issues, hamstring flexibility issues strength issues, a number of issues that you're going to run into that by using a box can help at least teach them the basic mechanics of sitting back, keeping their knees out, spreading the floor, keeping their chest up, keeping their head back. And you can make those corrections in the bottom of the bottom of the lift when they're sitting on the box and when they're in a basically a rested state. At that point you can correct them, push their knees out, arch their back, teach them to come straight up. Where if you're doing just a free squat you can still do those things but it's much harder to do because they're in a static contracted position and their focus isn't going to be so much on listening to what you're saying it's going to be listen it's going to be on I need to get out of the bottom of the squat so from that standpoint from teaching the squat I don't think there's anything more effective than a box squat from that perspective as far as training the squat I've written several articles detailing the benefits of the box squat that can be linked to this video so I don't want to go into detail about that, but throughout my history I've seen no better way to train the squat for absolute maximum strength than by using the box squat. The explosive strength that I've seen developed from the box squat is amazing and has done tremendous things for all the lifters I've ever trained with while I was at Westside Barbell and all the lifters that I've consulted with since then. So I do feel that the box squat, the box squat deserves serious consideration Yes, for the powerlifters, but also for other for other strength athletes, you know, albeit football players, bodybuilders, and whatnot. Um, I don't want to speak outside my realm and get into different sports athletes because I have limited experience working with them. My background is working with you know powerlifters and strength athletes. From a bodybuilding perspective, working with John and working with some of the other bodybuilders that have come out here with John, the box squat's been a very effective tool in being able to teach them how to activate you know, the hamstrings when they squat, how to reinforce their technique once again. A lot of times we do find that with the box squat we do want to bring them up a couple inches higher to be able to actually, depending upon what you want to work, you know, if it is you know, to work more of the quad and take more of the hamstring and glute out of it, we want to take them up a little bit higher with a little bit higher rep range. And if it's, you know, to get into the glutes and the hamstrings and so forth, it's going to be a closer stance down to a lower box being used more as a target. So 
it fluctuates depending upon the individual. But yeah, I do think there's applications for the box squat outside of power.